near Madagascar. Um, population is really small, one, one and a half million people. Um, well, since we're in China, let's talk about people of Chinese descent. Um, we only make 2% of the population in Mauritius, but I was talking with Waldo that makes about 250,000 persons um, who are of Chinese descent. Um, don't ask me about my family tree, it's huge. So my great-grandparents came over from China more specifically from the Guangdong province um, to Mauritius. Um, so, what else can I talk about? Does anyone want to test his Mandarin skills? Don't. They're worth the money. Yeah. I will do Ni Hao and then I'll go say Tai Chen. But, yeah, we, since we're all lawyers here, most of us are lawyers here, um, Mauritius law is crafted in both French law and English law. The reason being a historic one. We had the French who colonized Mauritius in 17 something, and after the British won the island over from uh, the French, that's when that uh, English law was crafted into French law afterwards. So nowadays we've got a really complicated um, legal system, which is based both on French law and on English law. For example, um, civil proceedings are carried out under the French Code, which used to be the Civil Code, which is called the Code Napoleon, from the Little Napoleon. And most commercial matters are cut onto English law. For example, our Companies Act is based onto English law and New Zealand law. So we like to take a bit of everything and put it in Mauritius. <laughs> Um, well, as you can see, we are reputed for the sandy beaches and the sea, but um, recently it's been the policy of our government to set up Mauritius as an um, offshore financial center. That is, we provide um, corporate services for the incorporation of offshore companies to benefit from the double tax treaties that Mauritius has with, for example, the most well-known one is one with India and we have one with China as well and quite a few African countries as well as European countries such as the UK, France and then Arab countries such as um, the United Arab Emirates. Um, I guess that sums up a bit about Mauritius so if you have any questions, fire you with. I don't have rates or incomes. Um, 15 percent flat, no matter how much you earn, except under some threshold, which is about, let's say, 8,000 yuan per, per month. And then if this threshold, you're going to tax any tax on, the, on your income. But anything above this, you cha you're charge 15 percent flat. It's the same rate as well for um, companies, anything yeah. that's um, a corporate body except for companies in the offshore um, business. Which, if, um, let's say, for example, the treaty between Mauritius and India, for example, 
um, there's a deemed foreign credit of 80% exemption. So that means 80% of 15%, you would only be charged 3% tax rate while doing business with, China, um, with India. And with China? So With China? It should be about the same. Since there is this presumption that there is this foreign tax credit of 80%, it's, it's a matter for tax lawyers, but I'm not really specialized into tax, but um, this is the general norm in Mauritius. Thank you. Any other question? Did, did you explain how many percentage of Chinese people live Yeah, I did put some emphasis on that. Two, only 2% two pass. Let's try to increase that number. <laughs> oh, and if you want to, well, the latest developments, as I was telling Mr. Lehman earlier, there's this um, Shanxi Kiani group um, coming to Mauritius really soon. Uh, how do you spell it? So Shanxi, I, I think it's S H A N X I. Okay, no, that I'm not sure about the pronunciation. What's the second one? And Kenley, T I E N L I. Anybody heard of them? Kenley. I'll try to find it on the internet, but well, if it's working. Okay. Yeah, so they're they're coming to Mauritius, if somebody knows. Uh, yeah, that's it. Shanzi Kenley Enterprise Group. They're going to set up an integrated town or city in Mauritius. Um, they're investing about 500 million US dollars. And it's, and it's going to be a huge um, park where we'll they build hotels, offices, manufacturing plants. And this land is being leased to the Chinese um, company, Transit Canley, and expected to bring huge revenue both to this group as well as Mauritius. Right. Uh, did you, just out of curiosity, so people want to travel to Mauritius, how difficult, where do you get, how do you do the visa? What do you, what do you do about that? Just out of curiosity. For, China, for our Chinese national friends. They, Chinese love to travel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I had to ask my dad. Okay. Yeah, his dad is the ambassador, by the way, of Mauritius. But yeah. from what I read, I think. I hope he knows. Oh, you would know, I think. I think it's, I, I heard it's been extended to something like 60 days. And if, I may be wrong, okay, don't take my word on this one. Um, for example, I know from UK nationals, when they come to Mauritius, we, they don't need a visa if they're staying for 30 days. They just go to, um, take their plane ticket, arrive at the airport, and get their visa stamp right there at the airport. And that's it, they can stay for 30 days. Um, does, does the embassy here issue visas? Do you yeah, know? yeah. They do. The Mauritius embassy does. So just so, for those of you who remember, we used to be in the same building as the embassy of the of Mauritius uh, a number of years ago. And, and uh, Vincent's father was kind enough to meet with myself and with uh, Matthew and with Andrew. And that's how it all got started where why Vincent came here today. And hopefully we will be able to cooperate with him, uh, our firm with him going forward. So. Uh, that's why we wanted him to say hello. And I, I, he did not plan, as he probably said, the speech, but we asked him to do it anyway. So he's a good sport, just like, like you guys are. So appreciate it. Well, thanks very much, Vincent. We appreciate it. I think that concludes our, uh, our